didn't always used to be cruel. It didn't always used to be like this. But it's cruel now. that goes by whether it's in person or online doesn't matter not a day that goes by where I express my concern about these non-native frequencies even if it's not, even if it's not even a, like about me and like my condition where I'm just like just in general this is a concern because we have well over 300 years of, you know, modern research, uh, you know, talking about radio emissions from AC current. And that's, you know, that's not even including the tens of thousands of studies that have been done since the 1920s. And that's also not even including a lot of you know, Soviet research, which of course the West actively ignores and denies, not just ignores, but denies. Um, there's not a day that goes by where I bring up this concern with the sauce to back up my claims where I'm not laughed at or called crazy or schizophrenic. And then, when I'm called crazy or a tinfoil hat or whatever, I mean, this is like, I, this has been years of this going on, but it's just particularly nasty in the last several months. And um, it really makes it... rather demotivating to do anything that contributes to society. I have put in 10 years of intensive multicultural, multilingual social work, clinical behavioral therapy. I have put in volunteer work in all sorts of manner, you know, just in all sorts of ways, big or small. I have been in hundreds of homes. I've worked with hundreds of children and families. I've brightened up the days of, you know, those around me and whatnot. And I do so, you know, intentionally. I'm not just saying like, oh, I just, you know, but like I intentionally, that is something that I, you know, I do intentionally try to lift people up, try to bolster them a bit, but I'm also not going to bullshit them either when they ask me how I'm doing. There might be a week or a day where I'm really struggling with some particular technological aspect, some frequency energy bullshit, but I can't say that to people without getting laughed at and dismissed and called names. Whether they realize it or not, every one of these people is complicit in my systemic abuse. The systemic abuse, which is not just of me, but of everyone, is intentional. That much I can tell you. The systemic abuse is intentional by those perpetrating and those owning the commercial this and owning the government that that are perpetrating this abuse on the populace. So, I don't know how many of you know about narcissistic abuse or not. And if you want to know more about narcissistic abuse, I highly recommend uh, Dr. Romani's channel. But there are systems of abuse 
technological frequency energy of use. And when people tell me that my reality, oh, just get over it. I've been told that. Oh, just get over it. Move in with me. I don't want you to live in your car. I'm uncomfortable with you living in your car. So move in with me and get over your, your chronic pain. You know, the pain of living indoors, of the pain of living with so many different devices, the pain of living with other people with their phones and, you know, whatever, you know. I don't want to be some fucking ref recluse, but I also don't want to get fried. <laughs> I also don't want to get fried, and I also don't want to have my emotional health, my mental health sacrificed on the altar of all of these corporations that don't give two shits about you. That are all in cahoots, quite literally, via commerce contracts to destroy you, to destroy your mental health, to give you, yes, you can give people anxiety with, with Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes. You know, this is not some, you know, crazy thing that there's again, studies. Um, you can do all this stuff merely with some static, with some noise in the signal. And that doesn't even get into the spiritual implications of this stuff, which is what I would like to talk about on this channel. But again, it's very demotivating to do that. You're constantly called crazy and this and that and whatever. People in your real life have no clue how to engage with you because they're so sucked into their, you know, tesseract, very much tech addicted world. So I find myself an island And I think to myself, I'm, I cannot stand social media. The lot, like people just perpetuate all sorts of lies on social media. Like mind blowing. It is pointless for me to be on social media. It is truly mind blowing. People just like, no one can speak with nuance. No, no one can do it. No one can like, no one can do it. I don't know about you, but this whole discussion of frequencies and the negligence, the gross negligence, which is a very kind, kind euphemism, it's intentional, but gross negligence of the FCC and all sorts of other, you know, alphabet agencies and whatnot. There's no, you know, those topics need nuance. They need gravity to engage with at least intelligently or compassionately or any number of human qualities it, 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 you know but people have these canned fucking responses to everything it's like people are the algorithm which is really disappointing because people are so not the algorithm we're the singularity it has nothing to do with some external technology and you know blah, blah. it has nothing to do with that you already are the singularity you already are the singularity. But it is like living, it, it, to call it bizarro world is, again, like a major euphemism. <laughs> major euphemism. I'm going to do my best, but... You know, no man is an island. Bullshit. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that. I also call bullshit on this whole idea of like, oh, you know, you're not alone. Yes, you are. You better make peace with that. Well, we're all alone together. No, you're just alone. <laughs> you're just alone. Now that you have accepted, if you've come to the place where you've accepted that, so you eventually get to the point where you accept that you are fucking alone, period. And um, once you've accepted that, everything after that is, um, in the in the you know words of somebody who also is an island, I think, in in his own right, but whose opinion that you know I respect. 
Um, once you've accepted that, the rest, how you choose to embody and navigate consciousness is an act of mercy. We're already past the point of no return. What we have now is an act of mercy. That's how I'm experiencing and seeing everything. I'll be back. I got to go take care of something. I'm back. So in the vein of, oh, just get over it. Just get over it. Just, you know, mind over matter. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Listen, you can't address subconscious and cerebral nervous system dysregulation by just thinking your way out of it. That's why, it's the exact reason why, you can't tell someone who is, you know, clinically severely depressed, you can't just say to them, just stop it. There's a whole... There's a whole video, actually. I, I don't know if it was like some British guy or something, but there's this whole thing that I learned about when I was in grad school. You know, just telling people, well, just stop it. You know, you're depressed. Stop it. Feel better. <laughs> you know, nervous systems don't just shift like that on command. They just don't, you know. What helps nervous systems shift is a lot of rhythmic... Uh, piezoelectric stuff. So piezoelectric rhythmic stuff like, you know, breath work or tapping or there's certain fascia stretches, you know, fascia. Um, I don't, it, to call it fascia release is a misnomer, but um, there's that sort of thing. But, you know, sometimes it takes a fuck ton of time to do that and you also can't do that sort of stuff in some type of dysregulated environment so I'm not gonna go to a nightclub <laughs> with all this shit happening you know uh, I I'm not gonna go do that and then do my breath work and expect that to be an effective form of you know what people like to call healing no it's not just whatever you do for your nervous system and your trauma and all this other stuff. It's the environment and the relays in which your your body can adapt. And what do I mean by relays? I mean relationships. That's what relationships are. They're relays. So if, if there is no container and if there are no relays that facilitate your ability to, you know, chill the fuck out, which is a very crude way of putting it, then no matter how much you try to chill the fuck out, it's not going to happen, <laughs> okay? So if you are, like, in my position, where there is constant environmental bombarding, 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 my nervous system never gets a fucking break from that alone, you know, I don't have the luxury of just driving off and, you know, spending a week somewhere away from people in some cabin or whatever. Not that it would take a week. It probably would take a few years. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not somebody who, I, I haven't had a two-week vacation. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what vacations look like. I don't know, you know. I know what it's like to take a long weekend. Um, you know, so when you're working all the time, uh, or when you are unemployed due to your disability and then you are unable to work, which is its own form of stress. That's not restful at all. Anybody who has been unemployed, anybody who has been unemployed and they have bills to pay and they have mouths to feed and there's, you know, trying to take care of your body and all this and that, and you don't have the funds to do it. You know that being unemployed is not a restful experience. That's another added layer of nervous system dysregulation for somebody who goes through systemic trauma on a second to second basis. If I lived somewhere off the grid or whatever, and you know, that's a whole different story. And would I love that? Yeah, am I working towards that? Sure. Manifestation, folks. Manifestation, folks. Uh, quantum mechanics my way into some luxury cabin or 
something. Meanwhile, the world keeps going to shit. That's not manifesting. That's not materialization. I don't give a shit about a yacht. I give a shit about the world having biocompatible technology. That's what I give a shit about. I'm not here trying to be a recluse off in some fucking cabin. That's not what I'm here for. And no matter how much I meditate, no matter how much I do actions and do this and do that, even this whole notice of liability thing and like law merchants and stuff, which is incredible and powerful, but even that has its limitations and I'm, I'm not going to get into, that's outside the scope of this video, but I have, I have looked under every rock, I have left no stone unturned, I have done the detoxes, I have listened to the frequencies. manufacturers on LinkedIn you know so not having access to any form of government not that I want this but the fact of the matter is even if I did want it I can't get government assistance I can't get grants and shit for my condition when I'm stuck in traffic and I'm surrounded by four fucking Teslas or for, it doesn't even have to be a Tesla, but you know, I'm surrounded by all these newfangled fucking cars. Or even if they're not a personal car, semis. I looked into driving, um, you know, uh, getting my CDL and just driving across the country because why the fuck not? And, uh, you know, doing that for work. But all these fucking tracking systems and Wi Fi and stuff and these fucking trucks, I can't do that. That'd be the quickest way for me to die, <laughs> is to take some type of job where I'm confined in a space where I'm constantly getting cooked. I think if I was to do that job full time, I think I would probably be able to last about three days. And after that, after that, it wouldn't be good. I would either have some type of electrical heart failure, which I've already had once in my life. Um, I would immediately break out into rashes. Recently, I was staying overnight at someone's house for my job, and now I have rashes on my legs, and these are the worst kind. There's, I get different types of rashes, and the type that's on my leg right now is the absolute worst kind. But now I have that to contend with. So I have to discharge radiation from my cells, from my interstitial, you know, all, all of that stuff. And it's very hard to do when you're always on the fucking go. You can't get a good night's sleep, whatever it is. I do occasionally get good nights of sleep in my car. Um, occasionally. But a lot of that is, is dependent on the environment around me. And for those of you who are wondering, like, oh, I thought you had shielding stuff. I do have shielding stuff. I use my shielding stuff all the fucking time. But that doesn't, shielding is an issue that I need to get into in another video because people just assume that because you have your little shielding thing, I have my shielding thing, so I should be fine. No, that's not how this works. Shielding is a misnomer. That's actually the only real thing, if we're gonna talk about shielding, the only real thing that actually is like a shield that where that word is appropriate is any type of like Faraday um, substance or any you know like tin you know aluminum tin foil or something like that that's a shield but Oregon magnetic oscillators tensor rings those are not shields that's not what those are so I have all my tips and tricks and you know all this shit I have all that and I am still losing this game of frequency. Xeno waves. And radiation is cumulative. So it's not like I can just, you know, it, it, no, it's a constant, you constantly have to be detoxing your body of radiation. Your body is constantly in a state of flux. You are either going to Wellville or Hellville. Your cells have something called calcium voltage gates. They operate on ding, ding, ding voltage. 
So if they are dysregulated by the environment, your the, the light structures and whatnot, the radiation and this and that, you know, of your environment, what do you think is gonna happen? You might not sense it, you might not feel the pain like I do, you might not feel your C5432 in your spine whenever you're around a, a, a Wi-Fi router or any type of gaming system. It's always, I mean, it's in other areas of my body too, but that in particular, always in my bone structure and, you know, in my neck. You might not sense it with your sensory system. And let me tell you something, spiritually, it is affecting you for sure. I mean, it's affecting you physically too, but spiritually, it's affecting you for sure. Emotionally, mentally, it's, it's affecting you. And in terms of out of sight, out of mind, oh, well, I don't feel it, so, you know, it's not obvious to me, so, you know, but I'm just a crazy, I'm just that crazy lady talking about frequencies who lives in her car. I'm just that crazy, you know, even though I see the world going to shit, even though I see more and more and more and more and more people, oh, I have ADHD, now having ADHD is a fucking badge of honor on Instagram. I'm neurodivergent. I'm this, I'm that. No, you're just getting bombarded with a really shitty spectrum policy <laughs> from the FCC. You know, we're not even gonna get into that, but you're just getting bombarded. That's all it is. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are getting bombarded on a cellular level and it's showing up in your lack of attention or in your desire to have this sensory thing and that da 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 And on top of that, even if we didn't have all these Xeno waves, everybody has sensory needs. So, um, that's a whole other beef for another day. But, you know, everybody's wearing all these disorders and shit as a fucking badge of honor. You know what would solve all of that? If your calcium voltage gates were allowed to do their fucking job. That's what would solve all of that. But, of course, society is so sick that they don't see that as a problem. It's just the way I am. I just have ADHD. Okay, well, in that case, if that's where we're going with this, then having severe PTSD on a slew of particular topics and, you know, realities, then that's just my reality. And you can't call me crazy because I just have PTSD. That's why my brain got restructured. That's why my nervous system is so fucked up. I have PTSD. So when you call me crazy, you're adding to that PTSD, which people are. Excuse me? I didn't even know that show existed. I didn't even know that show existed. People out here trying to educate me on my own fucking condition for, through a fucking show? Come on now. So, yeah, it's demotivating. People in my position choose not to continue living electrosensitives who finally end up in their car and get called crazy all the fucking time and this and that and dismissed and you can't get help and then you know there's no housing that's accessible to you there's no income that's accessible to you in my case selling my body so that I could survive this past summer yeah I'm fucking pissed yeah I'm fucking pissed yeah I get why people choose not to continue living I get it that makes perfect fucking sense to me there's no escape there is someone, I did not know this man personally, but there is somebody who was electrosensitive. He was a pastor. And he was living in this car off in the woods. He would come into town basically to be a pastor. Um, and finally, he just, he couldn't stand 4G anymore. The buzzing of 4G. Couldn't stand it anymore. The, and when I say buzzing, I don't just mean some annoying little like, oh, it sounds like a mosquito. No, this is a cellular, you feel it everywhere and you feel it outside of your visible body I the reason I have microwave hearing is because I have attuned myself to the parts the structures of my body my light bodies I've attuned myself to my light bodies so I can hear and feel shit here and here and above me and below me to the side of me it's all me because that's what the you know the bio field is People are so disconnected from their field. They don't know what the fuck is in their field. 
They don't know what traumas are in their field. They don't know what etheric implants are in their field. They don't know any of that shit. So yeah, those of us who are electrosensitive who also, this is key, who also have cultivated our intuition, which by the way is physical. Your intuition is physical. It's a physical constellation of structures, okay? Yeah, those of us who can uh, delineate, you know, 4G and 5G and 3G and 2G and we feel it in our C4-5s and all this stuff and we hear it, not just in ourselves, not just in our ears, in the ringing in our ears, in our jaw, in our lymph, not just there, but in our actual bile field, yeah, they're going to choose not to keep going. No fucking shit. So... This society that I live in is so disconnected, so disconnected from its divinity, from its intuition, that I appear like some crazy lady living in her car talking about frequency. Meanwhile, I see everyone going to hell in a handbasket, and I'm trying desperately, especially the children, Ugh, especially the kids, I'm trying desperately to like not set the world on fire <laughs> in my anger of constantly being gaslit and constantly being told to get over it. Oh, well, that's not ionizing. Yeah, it's a bit demotivating. Just a smidge. People wonder why I am the way that I am. If you've been through what I've been through and if you can sense in your field and in your visible body what I sense, you'd be long fucking gone. No offense, but like if you're that disconnected and then all of a sudden all of this information that I'm carrying got downloaded into your system, your system would overload. You would short circuit, quite literally. But people don't understand spiritual structures. People don't understand, you know, the, the rules of engagement in, you know, the unseen realms and because it's not just humans and animals and plants. There are a lot of fucking entities out there. And they comprise a constellation. Each, each one is a constellation of densities and dimensions. Just like you. You are a specific constellation right here in the earth realm. Of specific densities and dimensions that make that, all that information. Your morphogenetic field. Scalar information. All that stuff is unique to you. That is why we are all alone. I'm not out here being like, we're all one. I cannot stand that transhumanist shit. I hate it when the woo-woo crowd says that shit. Well, we're all one. We're all one. Well, and then I ask them, well, what do you mean by that? Well, we all come from the same source. And? <laughs> and really? So you're going to discount uncomfortable conversations? You're going to just throw form and shape and delineation and discernment, because that's what discernment is, you're going to just throw that out the window because you think everything needs to vibrate at love. False. Love is not the highest vibration. They proved that at MIT. Authenticity is. Most people don't even know what authenticity is because they're so disconnected from their scalar information, from their morphogenetic field, from their intuition, which is a physical constellation of structures. People, are, people are, have no clue. They're throwing all these fucking words around. And then I look crazy because I'm like, yeah, that's not actually... Okay, <laughs> trying really hard to be like patient and articulate and kind. There's only so much of the daily abuse that a person can take. So yeah, it's a little demotivating. A little demotivating. And I'm recording this video so you can fucking see the other end of this spectrum. Because I can teach you about grounding shoes and bells and fucking whistles all day long. But when I'm not doing that, this is the shit I have to deal with. There is no break. I don't get a break when I go to sleep. I don't get a break. And I haven't even talked about all of my shit in the unseen realms. I'm just talking about this when I'm awake here, you know, in the waking 3D land. We haven't even talked about all the other stuff that I'm up to. Anywho. But I need to get this off my chest because, first of all... I don't want to be on YouTube or any fucking place. I don't want to. I was very hesitant in college. I was like, oh, Facebook, girl, get away from me. I saw immediately what this was. And unfortunately, I feel as though I detect and suspect very strongly that I have to 
start putting this type of content out there because my life depends on it. Because everyone keeps discounting me and thinking I'm fucking crazy. Okay, fine. You want a glimpse into my world? Here's a glimpse into my world. This is what I have to deal with. And the day will come, whether it's soon or not, where I won't be here anymore. And some other person who's living in their fucking car, dealing with all the shit that I'm dealing with, and realizing, wow, I, I'm, <laughs> you know, the, the curse of being an oracle. But, you know, realizing that maybe, perhaps just maybe they come across my channel and they realize that they are alone. So I'm not there for them, you know, but they are alone and they can accept that and choose to do with that what they will as an act of mercy in this constellation, uh, you know, this, this realm of constellations that we're in, this constellation of dimensions and densities. And they can, they can have that agency to do with it what they want. So if they're going to fight, you know, if they're going to send their notice of liabilities, which I'm going to get into, I'm still learning the process, but they're going to be sending their little notice of liabilities and this and that. My issue is I need a new laptop if I'm going to be doing that shit. I don't want a new laptop. I don't want to buy a new laptop. This is the last thing I want to do, but I have to do it. So... You know, things like that. Are you going to go the route of law merchant? Are you going to hold these, you know, because all of these, you know, weapons are being deployed under commerce. So you're not, the whole lawsuit thing isn't going to go very far. Um, and in, in, in my observation of lawsuits, you know, with radiation, you know, Apple is another example. Lawsuits don't go very far. You have to go to law merchant. Okay. So you have to go to the jurisdiction above tort law and all that shit. If you want to do that, great. If you want to go find somewhere to live off wherever, great. Just know that unless a group of 2,000 monks come together to meditate on a world with biocompatible, safe technology, you can manifest that yacht all you fucking want. And I'm, I'm happy for the, you know, all the people out there, all these coaches and stuff that are just think, you know, think your way out of it and you know work hard and this and that you're still operating on Newtonian physics you say you're operating on quantum physics and you're not and you don't even know you don't even know what you don't know 99.9% .9 of the coaches that are telling me about thoughts this and how powerful thoughts are haven't even heard the word scalar I'm sorry but if you're gonna talk about how powerful thoughts are you need to understand the scalar field I wear these motherfuckers every single day and have been studying the scalar field for years and, you know, morphogenetic physics and this sort of thing. So I have a hard time accepting advice from somebody who can manifest a yacht. They can manifest, you know, a really nice fucking, you know, house and shit, but they haven't yet manifested a world where weaponized spiritual, you know, spiritually weaponized technology against, you know, in the spiritual realm, against humanity is still rampant. Tell me how that works. Tell me how it works where, you know, you expect me to follow you, but you can't even tell me about the scalar field. The scalar field operates at the speed of thought. These coaches don't know that. <laughs> they just heard or watched Greg Braden or some shit and followed their book their you know and I have the books I have the Joe Dispenza I have the Silva method I have all that stuff I'm not discounting that stuff but there's more going on and that's where people like me come in and try to tell the world hey there's more than there's more going on the reason all these successful fucking people Tony Robbins and shit they haven't manifested a world with safe you know biocompatible technology if and then people wonder why I don't vote if some person was to have some type of biocompatible tech, you know, whatever, and they were a politician, first of all, that would be sus. But anyway, if that was to happen, I would expect someone at least of the caliber of Joe Fresco, okay? At least of that caliber, who understands that technology is to work for you, not against you. This fucking scrying screen that I'm filming on works against you. It works against me. It works against the Earth's. Uh, microbiome and works against the trees it works all that stuff but nobody knows that because they're too fucking fascinated with all of the flashing lights on the screen they're too they're too mesmerized they're too mesmerized they're too hypnotized 
It is a very nested, deep structure of tech, spiritual tech, physical tech, all of that stuff that we are in. But I'm crazy because I expect, because I want to hold these, you know, all these electric cars. These electric cars are going to kill people. And I don't mean through a fire. They're already doing that. But, you know, I mean like through just with the fucking radiation. They're never going to change. And Okay. What do you expect me to do? I live in my fucking car. What else am I supposed to do? Tell them to keep going? Come on. Anyway. Um, if you want to know more about death science technologies, <laughs> stay tuned because I'm going to keep talking about it. This is just a little bit of a raw look at the strength and resilience that people like me have to go through to get through a fucking day. So wanted to make that plain for everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll see you next time, but today's not a good day. It's just not. And I have to document my life for reasons that are way beyond the scope of this video, but I have to document my life um, because there's things in the spiritual realms that depend on it. So... I begrudgingly post this. Anyway, I love you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.